So I've had the Charbroil S4600 for just under a year now. Uh, so I thought it was about time I put some of my thoughts down on video on what I like and don't like about it. So this isn't going to be a deep dive into the technical specs of this barbecue. Uh, we will do a little rundown at the start, but this is really going to be my impressions of it after having used it for most of a year. So the S460 is part of Charbroil's uh, professional range. Uh, and it is technically a four burner barbecue. However, looking at it, you'll see there are two separate cooker hoods. That is for two independent cook chambers. So technically, this is more like two two burner barbecues stuck together on the same cart. Seemed a little bit strange when I first got it, but I can see the logic behind it. So each of those chambers has two burners each, which are all independently controlled. So you can have them set up uh, as two separate barbecues or two separate cooking zones. You also then have the added benefit of a side ring as well, uh, so you can put a pan or a skillet over there and get some extra cooking space. The majority of the barbecue is made from stainless steel, uh, however not all of it is, uh, which we'll discuss later on, um, but the majority of uh, those hoods and the front doors and panels and stuff are all stainless steel. So one of the key features of this barbecue is the true infrared system. So this is basically a corrugated stainless steel plate that sits uh, directly below the cast iron grates. Uh, at the top of each of the ridges there are tiny little holes which channels heat onto the cast iron grates and gets them screaming hot. Uh, and then the main feature of this is that it actually distributes the heat evenly across the entire cooking surface. Again we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the review. So let's talk about the price. Uh, the recommended retail on this barbecue is £899, uh, so basically 900 quid. But if you do your shopping around you can get it usually from between 799 to 849 um, you can usually get a sort of deal on it, so uh, definitely don't take the first price you find if you shop around You will get a hundred hundred and fifty quid off it So before we get into what I liked and didn't like about the barbecue I want to talk a little bit about that infrared system true infrared system because When I first built up the barbecue I noticed that the burners in it were a little bit on the small side So that got me worried that it wasn't going to heat up properly uh, so then add into that the fact that that stainless steel plate sits across the entire uh, cooking grate uh, and actually acts as a little bit of a heat baffle. I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work. So there was definitely a little bit of a learning curve in using it because they don't act like normal grates. Um, the bars of the grate get screaming hot but there isn't much heat gets in between those grates. Uh, which gives you really great sear marks on your food, but it's just a different way of cooking So it takes a little bit of time to get used to it So from the start I had it in my head that this thing wasn't powerful enough and it was taking a long time to get up to temperature um, And for the longest time I kept that idea in my head until I finally decided to test it um, So I started off from cold and timed how long it took to get to specific temperature points uh, namely 150 degrees C, which is sort of a low roasting temperature, uh, 180 degrees C, which would be an average roasting temperature, and then 200 C, which would be for grilling. Uh, I don't remember this stuff, I have it in my phone. So, from 0 to 150 C took 10 minutes and 6 seconds, precisely. Uh, then up to 180 degrees C took 12 minutes, 28 seconds and 200 degrees C took 13 minutes and 32 seconds so it was pretty much all in my head um, I think those times were pretty average compared to my Weber 3 burner um, it gets up to temperature maybe a little bit faster maybe around the 10 minute mark so it's a few minutes slower but I would generally preheat my barbecue for 15 minutes anyway before I would ever start scraping off the grates uh, and I sort of found that that infrared system just has a different curve to heat up. It seems to heat up very slowly at the start, but once it starts to get up to temperature, uh, it comes up quite quickly. So it's just a different grill with a different way the burners act in it. So it figured out it was all in my head and uh, the thing actually performs pretty well. Which brings me on to what I actually like about this barbecue. And the main thing is that true infrared system. When I first got it, I thought it was a gimmick, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I wondered why this plate had to be put in the way of these grates. Um, surely the old flavourizer bar way works fine. But it does work a treat, uh, mainly distributing that heat. Nearly that entire cooking grate is at the same uh, temperature the whole way across. 
I've cooked quite a lot on my Weber gas barbecue and it does have hot spots. The flavorizer bars even it out a little bit, but they're always hotter directly over the top of those flavorizer bars. Um, and there are hot spots at sort of the front and the back of the barbecue. The true infrared system seems to have got rid of that completely. So I have to uh, say it does actually work. The one thing is it does need cleaning out a lot more often, but it comes with this little tooth tool for cleaning out that corrugated section. Uh, so nearly every time you use it, you need to lift that out and give it a quick scrape down takes two or three seconds it's not that bad but what it does do is save the inside of that cook box after nearly a year of cooking on it the inside of that cook box is almost like new uh, once you lift those grates out so it stops all that dirt and grime from falling down into your cook box and with that tool it is actually pretty easy to clean it out so another added benefit which I wasn't really sure whether I was actually going to use or not is the dual hoods um, no matter what size of barbecue you have, if you have a large four burner barbecue there's only so much variation you can get from one side of that cook box to the other um, but because it's all one large chamber uh, you're kind of limited there whereas having two chambers, if you need both chambers screaming hot uh, you can do that. If you want one for low and slow and the other one screaming hot for grilling you can do that. You're not going to be able to do that on a barbecue that doesn't have a split hood. So there are a few occasions where I've put it to good use. I've had one side maybe for keeping food hot, so it's on at its one burner lowest setting, uh, and the other side's where I'm cooking off most of my food. Uh, so it is definitely a good idea, and it's something I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen in a few other barbecues. And the one thing I will say is that the right hand chamber doesn't get quite as hot as the left hand chamber. So all four burners run off one feed, and that's fed from the left hand side. So those first two burners uh, going into the first chamber seem to take up more of the gas feed than the last two burners. So there is a difference of maybe around 20 degrees or so going into that last chamber. Eventually they will hit the same point, it's just much slower to heat up. Uh, but this is probably an issue in all barbecues, but because it's one chamber you don't really notice it as much. And the last thing is build quality uh, and we're talking about how well the barbecue fits together and how well it's put together. So there are a lot of parts in the box. Uh, if you don't like building flat pack furniture then this maybe isn't the barbecue for you. Get somebody else to do it. But what I did like was that everything fitted together as it should have. So some of you might know or might not know part of my uh, 9 to 5 job is selling barbecues and building barbecues and I've built quite a lot of good barbecues over the years and I've built quite a lot of rubbish ones and the rubbish ones always need that little bit of bending and uh, brute force to get them to fit together properly uh, whereas this one everything lined up everything went together properly and when it is built up it is sturdy so there's a little test we do in the barbecue world if you want to test how well something is put together or built you hold the hood handle of it and give it a little shake side to side a crap barbecue will jiggle and bang and crack whenever you do that, whereas a decent barbecue should stay relatively sturdy. Now that leads me nicely onto what I didn't like about it. And there are only two things. The first thing is some of the materials. Now I mentioned before that the barbecue is mostly made out of stainless steel. However, uh, the majority of the cart isn't stainless steel, it's just those two front doors. And as far as the barbecue goes, the main control panel and side shelves are all stainless steel and the hoods are stainless steel but the actual cook boxes are just uh, regular steel. Now the cook box is probably the thing that is going to take the most abuse. Um, it's the same with any barbecue so I would kind of like to have seen that made out of cast aluminium. Uh, they tend to take a little bit more abuse and they'll last longer. Now. I did mention beforehand about that infrared system keeping the cook box remarkably clean so I don't know if it's really going to be that big of an issue but it would have been nice to see it in there and I know this thing is good for 15-20 years to come. And the second thing I didn't like about it was the warranty uh, so it's nothing to do with the actual grill itself but the warranty covers the stainless steel burners inside it for 10 years. Every other part of the barbecue is only covered by a 2 year warranty. Now, for a £900 grill, um, I would like to have seen a little bit of a better warranty. And I think Charbroil could have uh, put their money where their mouth is a little bit more with this one, and even extended that to a five-year warranty. Uh, just to give a little bit of confidence shelling out that kind of money for a barbecue. 
Um, at that price point, you are in competition with some of the sort of headline Weber grills, and they have a 10 year warranty on all parts. Um, so it would have been nice to see that, but it's not there. Uh, I have no doubts the barbecue will last a long time. I don't think there's any issues there that are going to uh, crumble and fall apart within those two years. But I think when you're up in that top of the range price bracket, you need to offer uh, a warranty to go along with it. So all in all, I think it's a decent grill. Uh, if you are going to buy it, just make sure you have the room for it because it is huge and the side shelves don't fold down on it. Um, so just make sure it will fit wherever you want it to go. If you want to read a little bit more about the grill, uh, I'm going to leave a link to Phil from Love the Barbecue's review of it uh, in the description box of this video. Uh, so you can go and read what he thought of the barbecue, you know he's been cooking on it for a while as well. If you have any questions about it, leave them in the comments below and I will see you again next week.